musky flavor. And <laughs> by the way, welcome everybody to our February live stream of the year of 2021. We're really happy to have you all. Um, let me know if any issues are happening with the stream. We're trying a bit of a new setup today. So uh, let us know if you're having issues hearing anyone or anything or anything technical is going on. Um, but we have a very fun show for you today. Today we have a guest on with us, uh, one of our, our very own art director on the Celt Singularity team. John, why don't you say hi? Hi, guys. Uh, nice to finally meet you after having kind of been uh, behind the scenes for a while. We're happy to have you, John. Uh, he's going to be sharing uh, some details about the beyond with all of us. So stay tuned for the second half of the show with that. Uh, and as always, we have Andrew. Uh, How you guys doing? Right I'm the uh, lead, lead uh, director on the game. And we have Bradley above me. Hey guys, Discord community manager right here. Um, you know me as Hype, so welcome back. <laughs> and I'm Emily. I am the community manager on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter. So uh, whenever you see a social post, that's me. All right, well, let's get started. Um, as a lot of you know, we've been doing the nature photography contest for a little over a month and that finally closed. Uh, and we just wanna say thank you to everyone who has submitted all of your photos. Honestly, we were pretty floored by the amount of photos that we got. Uh, it was a pretty intensive judging process. Andrew and John can vouch for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we did. We, uh, we judged for about three hours uh, earlier this week and looked through over about 150 submissions uh, of, of pictures of animals in the, in the garden. Uh, and it was a lot of, it was, it was long, but it was fun whittling them down. And we're really happy with the final uh, 10 that we've chosen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they were all so good. And then there, it, like, there were just some that stood out above the rest. So it was really hard choosing them in the end, but we managed to, uh, and we're going to be announcing the winners right here, right now. So let's get started with that. We wanted to kick things off with an honorable mention first because they there were just so many good submissions that we ended up whittling it down to 11 instead of 10. Uh, so this honorable mention goes to Shunned on Discord. So we just couldn't resist this cute little grizzly bear smile. Yeah, and this one was... Uh... This one? Yeah, we we uh yeah we love that one, <laughs> but it didn't it didn't make top ten. It was right on the edge. Uh, we we love how cute this bear looks. It was pretty close, but tenth place uh placed above that one because a, one of our teammates just loved this one so much that we felt that it deserved tenth place. Uh, it's this uh beautiful lion overlooking the Sahara, um by Cell Daddy on Discord. Thank you for the wonderful use <laughs> as well. Um, but we just thought that it was really pretty and it was a good representation of that part of the garden. So congratulations, you got 10th place out of over 150 submissions. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah, this one has kind of a fam family vibe because uh, it's the, the Lion King and the, the Lion uh, like wife there, or queen. And then they're uh, look. Oh, circle I'm of life quiet. yeah yeah people are saying you're you're a lot quiet i think maybe if you turn hello all of us down or... is that better do i have to scream <laughs> okay testing one two three thanks guys <laughs> sorry <laughs> about that okay moving on uh, in ninth place, we have this cute aerial bunny, aerial bunny. Uh, by Manswear. Uh, my mic is... Oh, oh, okay. Thank you, everyone, okay. for your patience with me. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think it just needs... I think, like, the overall volume of us needs to turn down, or you need to turn up. Okay. But... I do have a quiet voice, so 
sound great on uh, Discord. It's coming in. Uh, yeah, th this one. This shot is, uh, I mean, the bunny is one of the first animals you unlock in the land garden. And uh, so we got a ton of submissions of bunnies, uh, but this one really stood out because uh, they they almost shot it from underground and it makes the bunny look like this this, this huge animal. And with the, the, the bright orange uh, trees in the background, it really pops. Uh, so we, we liked the what they did with the composition and scale on this shot. Yeah. Great, great job. I like the um view from above like you're an ant looking up at the sky there were a lot of bunny butts that we got uh submissions of but uh, this one <laughs> did a nice job of not taking a photo of his, his butt kudos to the bunny butts um in eighth place we have uh this really cool kangaroo shot we liked the angle it was at and how it was just like hopping over the platypus uh just like <laughs> swimming in the river uh and that was by lucky duck 7 cvl on twitter so congrats yeah this love the love the long format it feels like the kangaroo is really just shooting through the shot uh, so. yeah but we got some good action shots in seventh place uh by cg howler on discord uh this was our favorite rat entry um and we just really thought it was cinematic and it told a really cute story so congratulations and this one was a personal favorite of one of our coders ryan so uh also shout out to ryan yeah this one makes me think of uh, the movie uh, ratatouille um it's almost <laughs> like the rat's deep in comp contemplation uh and there's a it's a big world around him. Just thinking of all the spices to put in his soup. Love it. Uh, in sixth place, we have Daylin 2003. Uh, this was one of the most scenic shots we had of the rainforest, and we just thought it was really cool how it felt like it was also telling a story, and it was layered. Um, you had the snake here, and then you have the the monkeys in the middle and then uh in the back you can't see because i covered it with our mascot for the contest but there was a uh, uh, some turtles in the back as well it just felt multi-layered and it was really cool and that was sixth place in fifth place uh we have our only tundra ecosystem winner uh which is the stag with these two wolves in the background we've been finding that the wolves it was kind of hard to like capture them in a photo but this one did it really well uh, in addition to having the stag in the foreground another cinematic piece and yeah, we really liked how the the two wolves in the background the one that's pointing his head up just kind of like draws a, a an invisible line directly up to the stag so the composition stood out in fourth place and the final winner of the 1000 darwinium prizes is emma louise dingle on instagram uh, another good layered piece with the deer family and then the rat in the foreground and the birds up on top we also thought that the filter was really pretty uh we have some members on the cells team who really like the saturated colors so this placed up there as well yeah, this one wins for most animals in the shot. It's got the rat, the birds, deer, and I think there's even something beyond the deer. This is yeah, like nice. this, is, this is like the classic uh, Bambi shot. I guess, John, when you were composing this area, this was kind of what you were imagining. You got the Bambi family and the trees, just <laughs> everything's, everything's in there. Yeah, we have the ibex sure. in the background. I didn't even realize that. Oh, sorry, it didn't happen to Rob. <laughs> And How do you feel about these photos, John? Because these were, uh, this is, you, you created this whole environment and now people are, are taking photos in there and like, there's a lot of like shots that you set up. Um, were some of these surprising? Like, uh, like this, this shot here, uh, I was. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, it's definitely great to see the players kind of go in and, um, 
explore the little corners of the garden. There's definitely a lot of content there, and we we definitely poured a lot of love into it. So it's good to see there's kind of finding finding all the stuff we put in there and capturing it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think for some shots like the, the Bambi shot, for example, we definitely kind of gauge that pretty carefully and kind of expected a lot of players to find that. But for others, like the next one we're about to see um, with the car, with the, uh, the monkey, those were totally surprising to us. So it was really great to kind of see um, the garden from kind of a new perspective that we hadn't really planned in advance. Yeah, John, you did a, an amazing job fleshing out this garden. I remember what it was like before we had this garden in the game. <laughs> How it was just kind of like a mosh pit of all the animals exploding out from each other. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I kind of miss certain parts of that for sure. Me too. Uh, it was fun. Yeah, it, it definitely was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was fun kind of putting it together though. And I definitely also want to give a shout out to uh, Olga and Jenna for all the work they, they did as well. Woohoo! Great job, teamwork. Um, and so in third place, and the first winner of the 2000 Darwinian Prize is Polish Ramen on Discord. They made this very, very cinematic piece. Uh, it, it was really striking to all of us. Uh, at first we were like, I don't know if I like this one. But then as we were looking at it more and more, the whole team grew to really love it. Uh, because we just really love this silhouette. And it looks like he's just looking out at the beach longing for something more. Yeah, the composition on this one really, it really grew on us after a while, because it's a little strange at first, because you can't see his face, because he's staring out. But um, some, something about the balance of it spoke to us. Yeah, I like I, I like how you can, it's, it's kind of just peeking through the leaves, just like, he's kind of just being watched. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's a very nice, uh, very nice shot. Yeah, like we're getting through it. Right now, by the way, um, and she said that this is the monkey that she placed. Uh, so kudos to Olga as well. Shout out to you. Good placement skills. Yeah, we try to do a lot of storytelling uh, as we're placing the objects, uh, whether that's like putting animals together or um, uh, like just trying to create little little stories that might occur um, in, in the environment for. For the players to come up with and i think that was perfect for this contest as we can tell a lot of people just took their creative skills and ran with it like they did in second place steven yarber won <laughs> on twitter with this cute little fox and then this flower in the foreground uh, it was a very natural setup and we felt like it was well timed and just a really cute photo all together. Yeah, I, I, I like the just the subtle open mouth. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like he's he noticed the camera and he, he's he's smiling. <laughs> he's just so happy yeah, the to be there. And the photos that kind of make make me uh wonder what these animals are thinking like the mouse one really did a nice job of this uh you really like think what is this mouse thinking about um and with this one like what's this fox contemplating uh is is he looking at the flower um it, it, is there, there's like a world inside these animals that they're they're going about their lives and again i just want to say thank you to everyone who uh sent us your photos we had a great time going through them and uh we just were really excited by all of your submissions and your excitement about this contest. It really means a lot to us. With that said, here comes first place. Should we do a little drum roll? Yes. So this is this was uh, the best. What we decided the best photo out of like 150 submissions. Um, and uh, yeah, so here we go. <laughs> And first place goes to Alakaru99 on, uh, I believe, Instagram. Yep, Instagram. Uh, this just, <laughs> in the end, when we saw this photo, we were like, this is really impressive uh, with a tiger in the foreground, but then you see the two humans behind it with the birds flying. 
And then in the very, very, very background, there's that little rabbit. So we felt like this was a good representation of the garden overall. Yeah, so a lot of timing, like the, the person who took this had to, they're waiting for multiple things to come into the screen, like the tiger's got to walk in the right place, the humans have to be walking, and then to catch that bird, all the timing is a lot of waiting and uh, staking out the shot. Yeah. I, I couldn't uh, imagine how long this could have taken him. <laughs> yeah, of all the animals in the, the garden, I would say the tiger is probably the most elusive. So it's kind of the hardest to even select and find. Um, so yeah, definitely, I think this one is deserving of the spot. Yeah, you can tell how much love went into this photo. So congratulations, uh, you have won 2000 Darwinium. And uh, your choice of a sales t-shirt or a sales mug on our uh, merch store. So uh, I'll be reaching out to you and letting you know that you won if you're not watching our live stream. And we'll communicate with you about your prize. And for all of our other nine winners, um, if you're on Discord, be sure to message Hype. Uh, if you're watching our live stream right now, we'll be crafting some codes for you all during the week and then uh we'd like to get those sent to you guys by sometime next week so congratulations everybody we shower you with darwinium <laughs> yeah thanks so much for submitting your photos uh, we were blown away by the quality of these these uh, photos here and i had a great time looking at all of them so Thank you, everyone, for your submissions. I'm still very low. Okay. I got to get serious now. Got to bring this mic up and just put it in my face. Great. That's right. You sound, you, you sound fine over Discord, but I guess you're lower later. This, okay. All right. Thank you, sir, Anonimo. Okay. Uh, so... While we don't have all the details on our upcoming contest, we do want to share a soft launch with you right now. Uh, I hope you're all excited for our next meme contest. It's going to be caniform, caniforms versus feliforms. Um, so pretty much you choose which team you want to be on. Are you a caniform person or are you a feliform person? And you have to convince us why that side is better using memes. So we look forward to seeing what you guys create. I'm going to be posting a Reddit contest page sometime over the weekend. So keep an eye out for it. But in the meantime, get, get those brain cells rolling. We can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So it's a, yeah, so it's a classic competition. Dogs versus cats. Caniforms versus feliforms. <laughs> Uh, so we'll be judging, um, your goal is to come up with uh, different cell singularity related uh, memes that use stuff from the game uh, that help prove why either feliforms or caniforms are the, the ultimate uh, species. Um, the, we will decide, based on whoever comes up with the best memes, those, uh, those winning memes will decide who wins the, the competition. So it's, it's going to be quality of... Uh, the, the memes that people come up with, and and finally, I think the winning the winning animal will get an extra trait uh, on the tree. Yeah, so either caniforms or feliforms will get an extra boosted trait. Woohoo! And the winner, also, the winning side, also gets uh, bragging rights, obviously. So we hope you're looking forward to it. Uh, Should we? Should we, should we just say, uh, show our colors? I'm going to have to say I'm, I'm more of a uh, caniform person. Even though I, I have a cat, I think uh, caniforms are much more important in the development of human beings. Uh, they've done a lot more for us. I'm, I'm uh, definitely on team caniform. Absolutely. <laughs> really? Wow. Um, well, I'm honestly a both person, but just because feliforms aren't getting any love right now, I'm going to choose feliforms. Yeah, I'll back to Emily. Yeah. Thanks, John. <laughs> uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing what both sides come up with. So uh, until then, 
we've also been working really hard on the aquatic mammal patch. Uh, I know Olga worked really hard on some of these mock-ups that I'm showing you right now. Uh, we have been thinking really hard about the placement of all the 3D models on the tree. The cetaceans were thinking of putting or branching off ungulates because um, because they're related. Uh, they're just the unhooked uh, <laughs> mammals of the sea. So yeah, so so this expansion of aquatic mammals is going to tell the story of how um, uh, mammals kind of got back into the sea uh, and will feature the. Um, uh, the humpback whale as the main generator node, and then there'll be a few trophy nodes to collect. I think you could see a mock-up of the dolphin there. Um, but this isn't the only type of aquatic mammals that we're going to be adding. Uh, we'll also be adding one more aquatic mammal to the feliform part of the tree. I believe there's a walrus that a we're going to be adding caniforms. to. Yeah. Caniforms, because... yeah. Caniforms, yeah, uh, because seals are related to caniforms, so they can also be in the meme contest, by the way. Uh, and I think otters, too. Yeah. Um, I was debating whether or not to show this mock-up on the live stream because we want to have some surprises. But I think this is going to be a live stream exclusive feature that we're showing right now. I won't be showing it on social or anything, so... Don't go spreading this around on Reddit, guys. <laughs> but if you do, I'll find you. Um, <laughs> so this is for you guys only. Uh, we will be adding a walrus into the game. And there's also going to be an otter uh, node, though there won't be a 3D model for it. Um, and that'll be branching off of, ca of uh, caniforms. And then it'll uh, have... It'll be branching off of a pinniped trait. Yeah, when we started the uh, aquatic mammal patch, we were thinking mostly about whales and dolphins. The uh, uh, cetaceans, is that how to say it? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, I always say, uh, yes, the cetaceans. But then um, we were like, oh, we forgot about you know, seals and walruses that also spend a lot of time in the water. So it's, it's neat to tell the story of of two different major parts of the mammal tree that actually kind of use the same type of evolutionary trait, uh, which is like diving and being able to breathe underwater. But they're they're in the same environment, but they're not they're not that related uh, in the grand scheme of the mammal tree. Mm -hmm. So the mammal tree is going to be getting some new additions in two tip. In, sorry, I keep tripping over myself because I can hear myself in my headphones <laughs> and it's really jarring. Um, but, uh, as you can see, we're getting two new additions to the tree in two separate areas. So, uh, we hope to bring up forward to these three new members of the mammal family. Someone brought up the, uh, narwhals. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, we're still, we ha we're still finalizing the, uh, what's going to be included for this expansion. So, uh, the nar narwhals is a good one. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't. And the time, and the timeline for this expansion is uh, we should have this out pretty soon. Um, probably another two weeks. This will be getting released, hopefully. Uh, so this will be, uh, and for the pricing of this, this will be these animals will be priced. They unlock after uh, marsup or a little before marsupials. Uh, so we know some players, if you're playing the mammal expansion, it get, does get kind of grindy uh, right after our marsupials as you're trying to get to. Um, the uh, felliforms, I think, or, or the can the, the is trying to get to the lions. Um, so th this will help help make it a little less grindy in that 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 part of the game because there'll be more stuff to unlock there. Exactly. I know Nisa and Hanaro have both been uh, really busy coming up with the content that's going to be coming up in this uh, patch. Nisa's been doing a really good job writing. And Hanaro's been doing a good job piecing everything together and seeing how it all fit on the tree and play out. So it's been a real team effort, and we hope you guys enjoy it when it's released. I think 
now is the time to be moving on to the beyond. Uh, we have John here to walk us through what they've been working on and uh, I know that you guys have been kind of stowed away in your little beyond corner not sharing too much information so I would be uh, really curious to hear what you have to say on this show as well. Uh, sure. Um, hey guys, so uh, I'm John. Um, as Emily mentioned before, I'm um, working art direction for the game as well as programming and um, I'm helping also a bit with the, the design for the Beyond. So I just wanted to give you guys an update on uh, kind of what we've been working on, some of the thinking for the direction that we want to take the game in um, and what you as players can kind of ex expect to see. Um, so I know that kind of the Beyond has been Scope of the Beyond has been a bit of a catch, a wide, unclear thing up until now. So, you know, we've been kind of talking about it as covering all things sci-fi, all things space, all things kind of post-singularity. Um, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, the specific direction that we want to take things in and exactly what we want to cover um, in this part of the game. Um, really, we're thinking of the Beyond almost as having two kind of parallel parts. Um, so for the first part, you kind of, you know, out the celestial bodies of the universe using stardust. Um, so the idea is, you know, you create everything from the sun to the planets um, to the asteroid belt and all the other kind of celestial bodies that you would find in the solar system. Um, and then from there, we kind of are planning on building outward. So beyond the, the furthest reaches of the solar system into interstellar neighborhood and out, you know, all the way into the edges of the galaxy. Um, and then eventually, you know, in the later phase, even beyond that, so all the way out to the edges of the observable universe. Um, so that's kind of the first part of the beyond. Uh, the second part of the beyond is focused more on the emergence of sentience um, within the universe. So kind of you know, we build at the universe, and then um, we start kind of seeing intelligence form, and then you know you kind of foster that intelligence and build out colonies to expand into all these celestial bodies that you're building as you play the game. Um, just looking at the currency specifically, you kind of see, you know, the two main ones that we're thinking of are stardust and sentience, um, and then kind of supporting those are dark matter and energy. Um, so if you guys have played the dinosaurs, for example, um, this is kind of, um, the closest parallel would be the mutagen. So you kind of use these additional currencies to upgrade, um, your generators. Um, moving on, I guess, to the next image. Um, we have a mock-up of the tree. I'm not sure how much you guys can actually make out from the concept here, but um, I guess I can just try walking you through um, from top to bottom. At the top, you know, you can basically see the bank where you have the four different resources that you're trying to manage. Um, beneath that, we have the missions. So this is, again, similar to the dinosaurs. Um, there's actually a few important differences um, in how we're handling the mission system. So we, know, we, we definitely heard from players that, you know, late, you know, really deep into the dinosaurs, things started getting a little grindy, a little repetitive maybe. And so we wanted to try to um, refocus the mission system around larger objectives. Instead of just saying, you know, you need to collect a billion of this resource and you need to collect 20 of these generators. The idea is that we want to have actual objectives that tie back into the narrative of the game. So instead of just collecting things, you know, the idea is, oh, we want to build a Dyson Sphere, and all the missions are going to roll up to support that objective. Um, I guess looking at the, the main part of this screen, um, you can kind of see what the tree is actually shaping up to look like. So running down the center, we have um, the celestial body. So you see we have Venus, Earth, and Mars. Um, and then kind of branching out from that, we have what, are, what we're calling colony nodes. Um, the idea is, you know, as you play the game using Stardust, you create all these celestial bodies as generators. Then branching off of that, you have um, these colony nodes, which you purchase with sentience. Um, and then, you know, surrounding those, we have the cards, which you use to upgrade your nodes. Um, so there's a few parallels that we have um, with the dinosaurs as well as the main game. So the idea is we want to kind of take the best parts of both um, both of those sections of the game and try to integrate them into the beyond. 
Um, and then I guess lastly, if you look at the bottom in the tabs, you can kind of see that we have two new tabs. One of them is for the celestial bodies, and one of them is for um, the colonies. This kind of ties back to the main game where you have the life tab and the ideas tab. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of wanted to bring some of those ideas into the beyond as well. Nice. This is looking really good, by the way, guys. All right. So I guess um, the next part that I want to touch on a bit is the, um, the garden for the universe. Um, so there's kind of a lot going on here, but I guess at a high level, um, what we wanted to let you as a player do is kind of zoom all the way into you know, the planets and maybe even some of the man-made objects that we create, um, but also to kind of zoom out to look at you know, some of the celestial bodies that you find outside of the solar system. Um, so I guess just running through these points one by one, um, the first section is kind of this new information hood that we're trying to build out um, in the viewport. This is kind of a bit different from the, the regular tooltip that we have in the rest of the game that we're keeping for the beyond, um, which kind of shows you know, little tidbits and factoids about what you've selected. Um, the information HUD is going to kind of serve two purposes. First is it's going to show you um, play-related information, so things like your production speeds. If you, if you selected Jupiter, for example, you can see how much stardust it's um, generating per second. Um, and then the second piece of that is um, you know, just interesting sort of stats um, that we can show for the object that you selected. So in addition to what you get in the tool set, you can see, you know, um, class of star that you've selected or the distance from the sun, that sort of thing. Um, so there's lots of sort of interesting numbers and stats and figures that kind of um, occur at like these really large cosmic scales that we wanted to try to, you know, deliver to you guys as the players. Um, the second point is kind of this, I'm not sure how much of you can make out, how much of it you can make out, but we have like these little zoom. Um, so it's kind of to let you um, keep track of how zoomed in you are. So the idea with the garden is that, you know, you start out with the sun, you build out the inner planets in the solar system, then you expand beyond that to the interstellar neighborhood, um, the local arm of the galaxy, and then all the way to the Milky Way. And eventually, you know, outward even further to local superclusters, and finally to, to the edges of the universe. We want to let you within this garden um, kind of zoom all the way in and out on those kind of astronomical scales. Um, so just to help you stay oriented, we have like these little um, arrows on the right hand side of the screen. Um, the third point are, are basically the selectable objects. Those are like the little square reticules that you see. This is just to kind of help you identify what you can select, um, especially since you know the universe is so huge and the objects are so small in comparison. It just kind of helps keep track of what's actually interactable. Um, and then, uh, yeah, at, at any point, if you kind of click outside of that, um, it basically zooms you out further, assuming that you've kind of selected that, um, unlocked that part of the garden. Um, so if you keep on just clicking out on the empty space, you know, you can eventually zoom all the way out to the edges of the universe. Um, so uh, Emily, if you want to just um, maybe move to the next image. Um, here, let me just kind of one of the, out of the way. Uh, yeah, there, there's kind of a lot going on here. I'm not sure how much of it you guys can see on the screen, but um, this is definitely kind of one of the really big sort of uh, references and inspirations that we had for the beyond. I mean, especially, I'd, I'd say, for the garden itself. Um, so what you can kind of see is, you know, we start with the Earth, and then it shows you the Earth within the solar system, the solar system within the interstellar neighborhood, and then, you know, it zooms further out to the Milky Way, and the local group, which the Milky Way is a part of, then all the way out to the Virgo supercluster, which is the neighborhood that our gal nearest galaxies are in, um, and then finally to the you know, entire observable universe. This is kind of an idea um, which I think is really important, you know, for the beyond. I mean, this is kind of the, the scope that we're trying to capture. Um, so it's definitely something that we want to implement um, in the garden as well. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers, you know, the direction that we're headed in and what we've been kind of working on behind the scenes. Um, I mean, I, I would say personally for me, this is um, the part of the game that I'm most excited for. Um, 
but uh, hopefully a lot of you guys uh, are excited as well. Yeah, I think this is the part of the game that a lot of people are the most excited for, so thanks for sharing all this information with us, John. Um, and this is also just a reminder that this is the Beyond Phase 1. We have a couple other phases of the Beyond planned after this, so... Oh. Well, this, well, this, this, this whole scope will be broken into different phases, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're not really sure where to, where do, where do we go at after the end of that, uh, that uh, lar large scale uh, picture you showed us. Um, yeah, with Sky, Sky, so I think we will be because this is such a like a big scope of stuff, and we do want to get stuff out to you guys like um, as soon as as we can. We'll probably split off like. We'll probably release the like early solar system or the inner solar system first, and then kind of expand on top of it. Um, although we're, we're still we're still doing planning right now to figure out how to how to launch this thing. Yeah. So this is what we have for the beyond so far that we wanted to share with you all. So uh, we're leading into the Q and A session. So. If you have more questions about it, then that's the perfect time to ask. So, do you guys want to have the code right now? <laughs> it's that's amazing. what a lot of people are waiting for. <laughs> Take so, your guesses. What's the code? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the hint. It's space themed. So, it's comet. Oh, star. <laughs> Somebody will get stardust. That would Oh, well, that would have been a good one, yeah. Nice job. Did, this is for Darwinian, by the way. Did Ryan set that one up? Yep. He set it up oh. yesterday. And if he didn't, I'll talk to him. <laughs> so, comment 20 Darwinium. Let us know if you have any issues putting that in. Stardust uh, could be one of the next codes. We'll find out. <laughs> okay, we'll pull this up again at the end of the show. So, yay, ask us questions. I'm sure you have a lot. And thank you again, everyone, for showing up to the show. It's always great to see a lot of the same faces and some new ones popping up in the chat so we're happy you're here Aditya asks uh ios codes to when <laughs> i know uh, i know <laughs> yeah unfortunately no ios codes you have to transfer it from steam to uh your ios version uh but the Beyond, there's so much content in there, and we're we're really excited about it. Um, there, I feel like there's so many aspects to focus on. So so part of us, the thinking, the planning we're doing now is to decide what to crop on. Um, like I'm I'm pretty interested about kind of the air and space museum kind of type thing, like satellites and and early rocketry. So we're trying to get some some of the uh, current uh, satellites that are in space. Um, but then there. Uh, there's stuff about like uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that show, The Expanse, where they're kind of living in in our solar system. Like, how do we tell the story about kind of a future society? Uh, John, I love your focus on the kind of the outer space stuff. It seems like you're really interested in that kind of like what, what's beyond our, our solar system. Um, but, uh, I mean, I think that there's, you know, tons of content kind of on both sides. Um, I, I'm kind of getting, you know, the first part players will see is, you know, all the stuff within the solar system, all the kind of more grounded, either current um, technology or near future type current, you know, near future type technology stuff. Um, and then kind of the second part is going to be like the more speculative, like really out there kind of technology um, as you kind of build out you know, the extra solar kind of uh, generators. Yeah, and, and uh, 
with some of the current technology, like we'll have things like the International Space Station. Um, there are specific satellites that have been sent out to do flybys for planets. We uh, we were just searching around NASA's website, and um, they have a lot of 3D models available of the actual satellites. So uh, we want to include some of those details into this expansion too. Um, I you were talking about the garden. Um, I guess this garden will be almost like kind of a continuous space that you kind of switch zoom levels. So you, you can really feel the um, size of the galaxy expand. Yeah, I mean, it's still pretty early on. I mean, we're, we're working on prototyping it just to make sure that, you know, everything kind of works and feels good. Um, but it, it's definitely a little bit of a departure um, from the other gardens that you might have seen in the game. Um, so just supporting multiple levels of zooming is something that we haven't really tried before. Um, so hopefully it's, it's, it's um, you know, um, fun and interesting to actually um, play with. Yeah, I'm personally really excited for the zooming features. I think that'll open up a couple doors for us with some future expansions as well. And uh, someone was asking about the Civilization 2.0 garden release. Uh, we uh, That's on hold at the moment, so we can finish the space expansion. Uh, but once once space is, is, is in a good place, we will come back to visit uh, the Civilization. We, we know there's a yeah. lot of work to do there, but... I'm definitely excited to, to start work on that one as well, but... Um... And there's not that many of us, so it's, uh, I guess, one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah, we're a small team. Sorry, guys. Uh, and then, again, questions like amphibians and insects. Uh, we're, we're also really excited to get those things in there. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we're, we're going to drop a aquatic ma mammal patch soon, probably in about two weeks. Um, but amphibians and insects, those will also probably be after the space expansion because we... Uh, as you guys know, we've delayed it a long time, and partially as we get kind of distracted by something, and then we push it off. So we're, we're trying to get the whole team to focus on just just get the get the space stuff out and finished. Uh, but then after that, we'll have free time to to do things like insects and amphibians, which uh, deserve attention. So, uh, Sir Anonimo asks uh, the. I assume the, the release date of the Beyond changed, or is it the same? I think we're still on track, right? Uh, I don't don't know if we have a release date. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we don't have we 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 don't have a a release date, but yeah, we're, we're trying to avoid a specific release date just because we're, I know we've been doing that in the past, and we just we we don't want to disappoint you guys. So, and but we assure you that we're we're working really hard on it, and it will be released when it is ready to be released. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, we, uh, we don't have a specific release date, but we are, um, as I mentioned, we're focusing the team on this part of the game. Uh, this part, the Beyond, will introduce some new gameplay mechanics. So there'll also be a lot more testing that has to occur. So uh, we may also be doing some beta testing outside of the game. Like, if, if any of you remember a long time ago, we had a web build of the game, uh, and we might, we might do some more testing um, on our website at a certain points. Because we don't, we, we, there's, so, there's so many different changes to the Beyond that we, we might not want to stick it in your main Android game because it might mess up your save. So we might make an isolated testing environment for that. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep you guys posted about that if you're interested in giving that a try when we, uh, we start doing that. Uh, will there be aliens on other planets? Says uh, Love Era 200. Um, the aliens is, is a bit tricky because um, like that's really speculative, I would say. Like we don't really know what shape or form that they would take. We're kind of thinking about, you know, how we want to address it, because I, I do think you know, in all likelihood they are part of the universe, but um, that's kind of one of the questions from a design perspective that we're still kind of thinking through. Just, you know, we do want to address it, but we don't want to, um, I guess, get it wrong. 
Um, so that that's so one of the things we need to kind of finalize. If there were aliens, uh, at what phase of the of the beyond do you think they'd show up in? I would say probably the last one, right? I mean, so we're at least the way that you know. I feel like we've been thinking about it is just, you know, first focus on the solar system and then maybe the Milky Way and then finally the, the universe. Um, so I'd say somewhere in the Milky Way, that's probably where we would start thinking about it. Um, again, I think the specifics are still need to be ironed out since um, we don't, we don't want to overcommit and just, you know, and I think fundamentally the game is kind of meant to be educational and kind of grounded in science. So we just want to make sure that we're staying true to, true to that um, as well. Yeah, it's a little tough because once you meet aliens, it's almost, you have to kind of change the story quite a bit. So if 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 we did like meet another species, uh, would that just be kind of a story beat in the the story, or does that kind of have to shift the entire like production of uh, like the, the economy or something? Uh, so figuring out how to handle it. I mean, definitely like ideas like the Fermi paradox and like the Drake equation. Um, and so sort of the modern thinking about, you know, what extraterrestrial life might look like and its implications there are ideas that we would want to capture in some form in the game. Uh, K projects asks, can you add, possibly add a slider for sounds and music? Uh, are, are they playing on people that want the volume slider? Are you playing on Android or are you on steam? Because uh, uh, I tend not to like sliders because they're hard to like slide, but um, I, I could add a low volume and high volume uh, toggle. Yeah. Uh, you're on Steam, Pro okay. yeah. K Projects is Steam. Yeah, I think they asked previously. Uh, let me add. I'll add the low volume and high volume one for now. And if that's still not good enough, maybe we'll talk about yeah. a slider. Yeah, I think it makes sense on on Steam, right? I I don't really see it working on mobile but <laughs> um i think we have time for a few final questions yeah yeah it looks like there were some questions asked a little bit earlier um is there a probability for a fantasy realm I say no. <laughs> that's that's a that's a, a heavily requested piece of feedback. <laughs> it's good to know, though. Maybe the next game. Um, Cyber Warrior asks: Will there ever be a Darwinium generator at some point in the future? for the really, really late game? Uh, maybe. We might have, uh, yeah, we might do something small like that. It's an interesting idea. I haven't actually even thought of that before. <laughs> it, it, it might be a tricky to balance that with the rest of the economy. We've, we've heard that sometimes people uh, Fast forward their uh, their game speeds, and uh, that would be problematic if there's a Darwinian generator. <laughs> uh, um, will we ever see a Tesla floating in space like a Cameo? <laughs> oh, the car that's floating in space with yeah. the astronaut? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think we want to just like the Mammal Garden. We've tried to stick a few secret achievements in there. So we're hoping to sprinkle those also into the uh, uh, the Beyond Garden. Uh, so like we we want to fill these this galaxy space up with just a lot of a lot of things moving around, whether it's satellites um, or uh, just just the the, the, the colonies that you're going to stick on there. Um, also, in case we didn't make it clear, the Beyond will be a separate section of the game. So a lot like the dinosaurs is its own kind of micro universe. Um, this will be separate, and that's mostly for, for performance reasons. We need to kind of separate this whole content, uh, but that'll give us a lot of space to do really interesting things, like have the entire galaxy uh, kind of in this in this environment. 
Pedro Rayloff asks, space dinosaurs? Question mark? <laughs> sure. What are space dinosaurs if not aliens? I feel, yeah, I feel like in No Man's Skies, that, that's what it was all about, just space dinosaurs. Um, yeah, if you're uh, someone's asking about the Spanish translation, if you're interested in helping with that, uh, please email lunch at computerlunch.com. And uh, we can help direct you to, to that. Um, Common Durgan asks, uh, will there be a space station in the beyond, like something like the ISS? The ISS was here. Um, yeah, I, I definitely do think we're, we're trying to figure out um, how to get the existing historical sort of man-made objects um, into the game. Um, it, there's kind of two scales. So there's kind of like human spaceflight in the last 50 years, which I think is really interesting. And then there's, you know, the future of humanity or on sort of like a cosmic scale. But just finding the right balance between those two is something that we're still trying to work through. A few people are asking about how much data or gigabytes the Beyond will take up. The size will let me determine the size of the game's content. Uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, the size of our game is, is is only well to download from Google Play. It's like eighty megabytes. I think it takes up about two hundred megabytes on your phone. The Beyond will probably take up about thirty to forty megabytes. Uh, there's less three D models. Like the dinosaurs have so many animated three D models, and the mammals have a lot of animated models, but uh, this is mostly planet textures and uh, there will be a lot of 3D models with the spaceships and space content, but I don't think, I don't think the file size will be that big on that. Uh, someone's asking if the terminus chamber will be used for some kind of upgrades. Uh, yes, that is the plan in the future. Uh, we want to integrate the terminus chamber more into the story. Uh, it's just we are focusing on the space stuff at the moment. I think we have enough time for one more question. Um, can we have the option to zoom out to see the whole tree? Uh, yeah, we want to do that on, uh, on Steam, it's probably okay. On mobile, it just gets really slow. So we don't want to crush everyone's frame rate. Uh, <laughs> but it would be cool to see it. Uh, we just have some performance issues around it. Do people want to be able to zoom out more on the mobile version? I know I would. I feel like we've heard that a lot. I mean, yeah, the whole tree might be hard. It might be cool if we just actually created like an image or something that we shared a link to with the, the whole tree. Um, but yeah, get, getting it in the game, it would cause a lot of headaches performance-wise. Yeah, we could do like level of detail. If you zoom out to a certain point, then it, they just turned to little dots. Mm -hmm. So that could be one solution. All right. I think this wraps up, uh, up our Q&A. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, we'll be back on, uh, on Twitch for our next live stream in March. So I'll be posting updates about that on social. I have to take my headphones off. I'm sorry. There we go. Now we <laughs> can talk normally. <laughs> uh, do we want to show the code one more time? Yes. Just before we go. For anyone who uh, came in late, the code is COMET, C-O-M-E-T, all caps. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank I know you. this was thanks, pretty guys. packed show, so. Yeah, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll catch you guys in a month. And uh, please join the Discord if you want to keep up with stuff.
And uh, we're going to get back to work on this, try to get this out to you guys as soon as we can. Yes, and thank you, John, for joining us on this show. Uh, we hope you all had a great time meeting him and hearing what he has to say about the beyond. Awesome, yeah. Thanks, guys. It's great being here. Awesome. All right. Uh, bye -bye. Until next time, guys. We'll see you on social. And stay cellular. <laughs> see you, guys. Bye.